my neighbor was brought up. He's still coming up. I don't like it. I don't like that day, honestly. I don't like it. It's really pissing me off. So, Frankly speaking, guys, we need to be very careful. We need to be very, very careful of the people we have around us. Not necessarily friends, to be very honest, but the people around us. Because I was paying attention to the conversation between Fina, Groovy, and then there was Amaka, and then there was Chichi, and then there was Chomzi, and then later Bella came, chipped in her own quota, and then she moved off. And guys, it was the same old, same old lies. Honestly, it was so annoying. It was so annoying. And I felt really bad for Fina, to be very honest, because I just felt like the truth is right there in her face. But she's not seeing it. She's not seeing it because of blind loyalty. And if she could just remove the scales off her eyes, then I believe that she wouldn't even be friends with Chichi anymore. Not to even talk about Maka that she was trying to connect with yesterday to have a conversation about their friendship that was already, you know, getting all scattered and going south. So I was just watching these people yesterday night. I, it, it was really scary. It was really scary how people will say something scandalous about you and then they're standing right in your face and then they're acting. I mean, like even Chichi, they're acting like. I don't like it. I don't like that thing, honestly. They didn't say anything, you know, trying to make a case. And there's something I've actually really noticed now about these level up housemates. So because they all believe in, oh, um, when we go out, we're going to see clips. When we go out, we're going to see clips. That is their new line of defense. So when any of them says anything crazy about you, or maybe they do something crazy, right, towards you, behind your back and you you confront them the first line of defense they come with is and hey, don't worry now if you see i said it when we go outside you see clip after the show we'll see clip to be very frank with you guys how many of them will even remember to go and start looking for clips i mean this show is 72 freaking days at the moment this is week five there's still five more weeks to go and there's going to be many more things to happen, many more offenses to be given, many more drama, many more violence, many more gossips, as they call it, to unfold. So how many of these housemates are even going to remember to go and say, OK, they want to go and start looking for clips? Most of them will even forget about these things. And the only way they'll remember is if their coconut head fans start bringing to attention all those clips. Oh, come and see you, come and see you, you know? And it's crazy because in the space of these five weeks, some of them, their bond as friends is going to grow stronger. Well, some of them, they probably will become sworn enemies. Then it's pro probably those ones that are now sworn enemies that will now go and probably invest time, you know, in looking for clips just to be sure of, oh, did this person mean what he or she said? So guys, it was, it was just a messy situation, to be very frank with you. And on this video, I'm just going to go ahead and give you my own detailed analysis of that particular situation. We've talked about it on this channel before, yeah, but there were so many questions that Fina was not asking. There were so many questions that Chomzi herself was not asking. There were so many things that Amaka was saying, her body language, her facial expression, everything that... Fina was missing out on. And believe me when I say that if these people have been able to open their eyes to see the truth, then they would have caught the actual culprit of this whole scandalous gossip. So on this video, I'm going to go ahead, you know, and dissect that conversation, dissect that situation and come up with the truth. All right. But before I get into it, let me officially welcome all of you back to my YouTube channel. You especially welcome back. My name is Gloria Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Glory, and I am the girl with the T. Um, if you are new on here, please do not forget to do exactly what you see on your screen. This is one of the fastest and easiest ways for you to be able to receive a lot of my videos whenever I upload a new one and to also be able to join the family. All right. Now, all of that said, let's quickly get into this video proper. So we're talking about the same scandalous gossip that had, you know, sprung up in the house on monday yeah on monday it was about oh groovy and fina they started having sex beneath the sheets they started giving each other hand jobs blow jobs and all manner of things like that like they've really 
gone advanced in their relationship. Now, as at Monday, they had stopped talking about the issue. Yes, because they just wanted everything to die down. Fina especially really wanted to stop talking about it because for her, it was really disgraceful. Yes, I mean, it was on national television. Everybody in the house was talking about it. And even if she and Groovy had not started having sex yet, she felt like it was really embarrassing, you know, for such a conversation to be going around in the house. But the conversation sprung up again last night after their after their task, um, their unique soap task, yes. And it has sprung up because according to Fina, ever since that gossip came out, she had been trying to have a conversation with Amaka. But for every time she approached Amaka, Amaka would give her the cold shoulder. Amaka would complain of a headache. Amaka would complain of getting tired. Amaka would literally complain of everything. And even when she would even touch Amaka to try to play with Amaka as her friend, as her bestie in the house, Amaka would give her this weird reaction, like maybe Fina's touch kind of irritated her. So it started bothering Fina, you know, especially when she had had a diary session with Big Brother. I think that was on Tuesday. And Biggie had asked her about, you know, her friendship with Amaka. Biggie had even asked Amaka this same question about Fina and it was quite surprising guys I'm going to be very honest with you it was quite surprising that during Amaka's diary session she has said she meant well for Fina she has said all manner of nice things that oh she knows that Fina is who she is but sometimes Fina should learn to you know listen to other people know when she's wrong and all whatnot and Biggie had asked her a question that where is that coming from she said it's coming from a place of care it's coming from a place of love now it was quite interesting that immediately after Amaka's diary session, she had gotten back into the house. She had completely kind of zoned or should I say ghosted Fina. And Amaka turned and looked at her and saw that, okay, this girl is actually really sad. And Amaka turned and looked away. Like Amaka was completely on board. And I even want to mention the weird look that Amaka gave to Fina that very day before the fight started. It was that very day um, when Fina was giving her own idea before um, Shex decided to oppose and then you know take the idea as though it was his when Fina was speaking by the time she was done there was a way Amaka had looked at Fina guys it was really weird it was really really weird like I I panicked when I saw that look I'm like ah why is Amaka looking at her bestie like that this is this is really weird this is not really healthy at all but Fina had brought up the conversation again last night with Groovy and she had done so because immediately after the task she had approached Amaka for a talk, you know, to address all these weird vibes Amaka had been giving to her. But once again, Amaka had given her the cold shoulder. So she became very worried and went to have this conversation with Groovy, you know, to tell him that, listen. She has been they are doing it like they don't want struggle. She this with her full chest. That at this point, she's 100% convinced that Amaka is the genesis of that gossip about herself and Groovy. And then she decided to go and ask Chomzi again. And guys, it was quite interesting because <laughs> it was quite interesting because by the time she went to Chomzi, Chomzi said, Fina, I swear, if a clip comes out today, you will hear everything that I said and you see that I'm actually telling you the truth. Chomzi still held on to a narrative without changing anything at all. For her, the clips should be played by Big Brother so that they will know who is actually lying. Now guys, the interesting part was that even later when Amaka came out, I mean Diana had gone to go and call Amaka so that she and Fina would address their friendship issues. Amaka had given a million and one reasons why, oh, she was not intentionally, you know, giving Fina weird vibes. Yeah, we might be discussing something else. So that's why the bonding is not there. Mm -hmm. Now that I have called my notice to it, I'll actively try my best. I don't know that you are feeling this type of way. Right. According to her, she had her own issues, blah, blah, blah. In fact, earlier, she had even told Giddy Fire to give her space. They should take their relationship one step at a time that they were running too fast. It's only been three days and then they are, you know, all over the place with their relationship. But then, after that entire conversation, Amaka was inside playing with Diana. And I was wondering, like, okay, this is the same person that is coming to come and say, oh, she has a lot that she's dealing with, that Fina should give her time, she'll come and meet Fina. I mean, guys, it was just so weird. It was so weird. But now, on the flip side, Chichi was right there, almost trying to create drama because Chichi literally decided to put herself, you know, at the center of it all. According to her, she heard her name, she wants um, Chomzi to call all the parties involved and then everybody should look each other in the eyes and then they should now admit and speak their truth. That was what I was expecting this one to do. Please, my dear friend, you just kind of, okay, what is this? You need to 
And that really cracked me up because to be very frank with you all guys, I mean, Chi Chi and Bella, they obviously know that they are both lying. Bella even came at some point and said, please, I beg you all in the name of God, let's stop this conversation. It's okay. Da, 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 da. And then she went inside with um, Shags. And me, I was just laughing because guys, at that point in time, I felt like, okay, fine. This is what Fina is not really getting. If Fina could open her eyes, Fina and Chomzi, if they could open their eyes and, you know, ask the right questions, then I believe that both um, Bella and Chichi will be thrown into confusion and they'll be caught red-handed by their own lies. Number one, when Groovy was trying to explain the situation about how he got to hear whatever Chomzi said, he did not explain that he was actually, you know, making advances at Chomzi before Chomzi was forced to reveal or disclose that information. He did not touch, touch up on that part. He just said it on the passing notes that, oh, that eh, after the party, he was tipsy. He feels Ch um, Chomzi was tipsy, so they were just talking, and then she now said it. At that point in time, I was expecting Fina to ask the pertinent question. That, okay, what exactly were you talking about that was so deep, that was so serious, that warranted Chomzi to reveal such a sensitive information to you? What exactly was that? But Fina did not ask that question because she was already upset. And then the whole conversation about, oh, Chichi said it, Chichi said it. At that point in time, when Chomzi had come out, I was expecting Chomzi to ask directly to Chichi that, Chichi, you are not the one that told me this gossip. Bella told me the gossip. And Bella said that you told her the gossip and that it was a marker that brought that gossip to you you told it to bella bella told it to me so that was what i was expecting guys pop and playing i was expecting chomzi to outline the structure of how the gossip got to her but she wasn't all of them were just beating around in circle guys they were just going around and around and around in circle you know, and it was quite, it was quite tiring and exhausting because by the time Amaka came out too, Amaka was trying to play the innocent, she was trying to play the victim card, she was like, God knows that I will not say this kind of thing to you. I said, do you know how many times we call the name of God and we lie in the process of calling the name of God? If God was that unmerciful, he would strike us with thunder for every time we call his name when we're lying. Guys, my verdict is Amaka really hasn't found closure from that whole circumstance you know, that resulted in Groovy choosing Fina over her. I don't think Amaka has actually found closure. And my fear is till the end of the show, till reunion, we're still going to be having this conversation. The conversation is not going to die anytime soon. My fear is it's going to cause a huge argument, a huge fight, a huge altercation between Amaka and Fina. And guys, this time around, Fina is not going to back down. No, because she's the one that's been offended now. So she's not going to back down. She's going to go all out crazy. She'll pro probably catch a strike because at the moment, the lies keep coming. The lies keeps, you know, it just keeps coming and she's trying. That's Fina is trying to clear the air, but everybody's still concealing their own part of the story. So you see that fight that Fina and Amaka had in Rikwan. Guys, believe me when I say that a part two is going to happen before this season ends and it's going to be more blood. It's going to be crazier than before. Anyways, this is where I end this particular episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. Um, guys, just go ahead and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Who do you think exactly is lying? Who do you think is playing the victim card? Let me know the names of those people and why in the comment section below. And I'll see you all on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. Do have an amazing day. Bye.